How are you guys doing today? I know it's a little different today. We're meeting online, but I believe God's word can be spread throughout in different ways. So today, I, I believe I have a message that's going to encourage us and challenge us. It's going to be a little different since we're not meeting together, but I still believe God is going to move. So when I was going through these past two weeks, I feel like I've been living my life kind of to a standard. Like a lot of people set standards on how they want to live their life. Others set their standards on how other people set their standards. And then there are the, the standards of God on how God wants Christians to live. And I've been trying my best to live upon these standards, but I've been finding it that recently I've been getting angry at myself whenever I fall beneath that standard. And when I fall beneath that standard, I would get so angry because I feel like I wasn't living up to the expectations. Like, I call myself a Christian and I do all these things. I'm trying to be a pastor. But how do I not live to the standards and the rules that God has applied? And I realized I was getting so angry because I was trying to prove my self-worth on how I was worth my salvation. Like, I was trying to prove to God that I'm worthy. And then about two weeks ago, God dropped this upon my spirit. And he said, you are a product of grace. So the title of my message today is, I am a product of grace. So before we start, I just want to pray. Thank you, God, for just giving us this opportunity to meet together online in a different way. I pray and thank you that we are still able to meet together, whether it's not physical, but still we can meet spiritually together and just read upon your word. I pray that your word would go out and it would change lives and encourage others. I pray that you use me as a vessel in this moment now. In your son's precious name, I pray. Amen and amen. So the title of the message is, I am a product of grace. And when I read this, I thought of this scripture text right here. It's Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And when I read that, I felt like Paul wrote this just for me. Because the first part of the verse says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. Meaning, it doesn't matter how good of a Christian I am. It doesn't matter about how all the good deeds I think I've done or how I felt like I've helped so many people in different ways. Because if it wasn't for the grace of God, then I could not achieve that salvation on my own. And that also means no matter how, how bad I am, no matter the wrong things I've done, even when I fall beneath the standard, it is only grace that brings me back up. And the second part says, it is the gift of God, meaning you didn't earn it. You didn't buy it. You couldn't achieve it by yourself. It was freely given. And I don't know anybody who doesn't like a free gift. Have you ever heard those people say, if it's free, it's for me. My mom used to tell me, if it's free, take it. And the best things about gifts are typically, they usually come when they're unexpected. Because typically you're not asking someone to get you a gift. They're something you really want or need, and they come from people who generally care about you. And while I was writing this down, the Lord brought this passage to my mind. So open your Bibles with me to John chapter 4, verse 5. Here Jesus and his disciples are ministering to people baptizing them and the Pharisees are beginning to hear about their work. And instead of going around Samaria because Jesus was about to travel back to Galilee, he decides to cut through. And there he finds a woman. So starting in verse 5, it says, Now he came to, to a Samaritan town called Sichar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, so Jesus, since he was tired from the journey, sat right down beside the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me some water to drink. For his disciples had gone off into the town to buy supplies. And while reading this, I thought to myself, I see here Jesus stays behind as his disciples go forward. And even though he asked this woman for a drink, he knew ultimately she would be the one receiving. Like he asked her for water because his body, his physical self is tired. And he's been traveling and he's going to cut through Samaria. And he asked this woman for a drink to try to sustain his body. But he ultimately knows that she will be the one fulfilled. So the first point that I have for you 
is even when things aren't going well, remember you are God's priority. Have you ever seen those professional athletes, how they train so hard, or, or a single parent who works multiple jobs to pay the bills, or a student who's gone off to college, has left their family behind, and they're studying so hard just to pass the classes that they're in. And if you ask them, why do they go so hard? What drives them? They always say, I do it for my family. I do it for my kids. I do it for the people who sacrifice so I could get here. Because their families are their main priority. And as God's children, we have to remember in the tough times that even though things may not seem so great right now, we are God's family and we are his priority. We have to trust and believe that he's in control. But that's much easier to say than do. Because right now things are looking kind of tough in the world right now. A lot of people are losing their jobs. A lot of people can't go to work. Schools are closing down. Kids are doing it online. Colleges are online completely. And even though through all this chaos, we have to keep our eyes on God and trusting and believing in Him. Because Romans 8 verse 28 says, And we know all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. And I believe this is how the Samaritan woman felt here. In verse 6, it says that Jesus sat down by the well, and it was about noon. And around that time, I don't know about y'all, if it's 12 o'clock outside in Florida, that means it's hot outside. And, and back then in those times, if you were going to get water from a well, you would typically go early in the morning before the sun comes out. Well, before the sun is at its peak, or later in the afternoon when it's not too hot. And this woman is out there when the sun is at its peak temperature. And she tries to get water and leave. But this random man is sitting by the well and he asks her for a drink of water. And she recognizes that he's a Jew. And she replies to him in verse 9. So the Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for water to drink? For Jews use nothing in common with the Samaritans. And Jesus answered her, if you had known the gift of God and who it is who said to you, give me some water to drink, you would have asked him and he would have given it, given you living water. Sir, the woman said to him, you have no bucket and the well is deep. There then do you get this living water. Surely you're not greater than our ancestors Jacob, are you? For he gave us this well and drank from it himself along with his sons and his livestock. Jesus replied, Everyone who drinks some of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks some of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. But the water that I will give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I, that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water again. The second point that I have for you today is the best gifts in life are the ones that come unexpectedly during a time of need. Just think about it. Have you ever been in dire need of something and then someone got it for you unexpectedly? Have you ever had to pay a bill and randomly someone sends you money out of nowhere and you thought, wow, this couldn't have come at a better time than right now? And I'm looking at this in the Samaritan's woman perspective after reading this passage. This woman sees Jesus at the well and he asks her for something to drink and she recognizes that he's a Jew and he still speaks to her. And she says to him, how can you being a Jew ask me a Samaritan woman? Like we have nothing in common. We usually don't talk to each other. Why are you speaking to me? Because Jews and Samaritans share nothing in common. And Jesus replies to her telling her, that he just wants some water and she's he, she's like i don't understand why would you speak to me and he responds if you only knew who was speaking to you and i would give you living water that you wouldn't have to come back here and you would never be thirsty again and, and she doesn't truly understand what he's saying she still thinks he's speaking on the physical level and and she asked him um you know I kind of want some of that water because I don't want to keep coming back here in the hot sun unless 
do you think you're better than our ancestors? Because they're the one that gave us this well. And they drank from this well themselves. So how can you be better than them? But I, I still kind of want some of this water that you speak of. And, and I love that Jesus doesn't even boast or brag upon himself. He just tells her that he's the gift from God. And whoever drinks this water will be thirsty again. But he has living water that will spring up a well that others can even come and drink from. So she asked him, please, can I have some of this water? Because she was tired of coming back. Then look what happens in verse 16. He said to her, go call your husband and come back here. The woman replied, I have no husband, Jesus said to her. Right you are when you said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the man you are living with now is not your husband. This you said truthfully. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you people say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Your people worship that you do not know. We worship what we know because salvation is from the Jews. But a time is coming and now is here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth for the Father seeks such people to be his worshipers. God is spirit and people who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. This woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called Christ. Whenever he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I, the one speaking to you, am he. The third point that I have for you today is, the enemy will remind you of the past to try to condemn you, but God will remind you of the past to show you he loves you anyway. Have you ever been going through a tough time and you're finally getting over it? Like you're finally getting past that hump. Like the first test you ever failed, it, it kind of stuck with you for a little bit, but when you got to the next test and you passed, you got over it. Or that one time you messed up when everybody was watching. Or a traumatic experience that happened to you as a child. And just as you think you're getting over it, someone brings it back up again. And you're like, oh, I was just getting over that. Why would you bring that back up? I remember when I was in about eighth grade, my basketball team was playing against a different school and their school completely destroyed us. It was horrible. And I was so angry and I would practice so hard. To, I told myself I would never let that happen again to our team. And about a year later, I was training, I got so much better, I would go on to high school and my old coach from middle school would send me, he sent me the game tape of that game. And I remember I would find myself watching that game over and over again and becoming so angry because I was so angry about how I played that game. And I had to remember, my friends had to tell me, why are you getting so angry? You're so much better than, you're so much better than that now. You're not on that level anymore. And I had to come back to myself and remember that even though this did happen, it was a part of the past, but I have to continue moving forward. And this is probably how the Samaritan woman felt. Because only reason she was going to the well at noon was because she didn't want to be around the other people. Because the other people would judge her. Oh, you've had five husbands. Oh, you're not even li the man that you're living with now is not even your husband. And they would talk down upon her. So she would go when no one else was there. And then she finds this man at the well and he asks her for a drink. And she, recognizing that he's a Jew, she, she, she just has to say, why are you even speaking to me? And she thinks that he knows nothing about her. And then they begin to speak. And then he, she, he tells her that he's going to give her living water. So now not only does she not have to come back to this well anymore, she's going to get a free gift from this random man who knows nothing about her. And then Jesus tells her, go and call your husband. And she says, I have no husband. And then he tells her all of her business, just spills it all out there. And she's like, wow. And thinking this man could be like everyone else 
who talk down upon me about all the husbands that I've had, about the man that I'm living with now. But instead, he, he spoke to me anyway, knowing my past. And because he, he reminded her of her past, but he didn't condemn her about it like everyone else did. And he was still willing to give her the gift of living water. So she thought to herself, man, this guy must be a prophet. He told me everything about my path. So then she begins to try to show herself that she's worthy of it. So she tells her, she tells him how they worship on the mountain, but the, the Jews, they worship in Jerusalem saying, that's the only place that you can worship. And Jesus tries to take her mind off of that. He says, the day is coming where you don't have to worship on the mountain or in Jerusalem. You just have to worship the Father in spirit and truth. But she, I can see that she's kind of confused. So she says, you know, I know the Messiah is coming one day. So we'll just leave that up to him and he'll, he'll explain everything and he'll clear this confusion. And then Jesus says, I am he. I am the one that you speak of. And, and, it, and in verse 28, it says, the woman left her water jar and went off into the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Surely he can't be the Messiah, can he? So they left the town and began coming to him. The fourth point that I have for you today is the gift of salvation can be shared by all who believe. This woman wasn't a Jew. She wasn't what we considered holy back in that time, but she had received something that she never received before, and she just had to go share it. And as she went into the town, she began to tell the other people, and, and it, they were encouraged by her words. So they all came out to find Jesus, to hear the words that he said because she had received the gift that was freely given and she believed that it could be freely given to them as well. I remember growing up one day, I went to the mall with my mom and I'm going around just following her as she's shopping, you know, just pulling on her dress, whatever she's saying, I'm just staying right there behind her. And as she's going to check out, we get in line and at the cashier's desk, I realized there's these remote control cars on the, on the desk at the cashier. And as we're going up, I asked my mom, can I have one of those toys? Like, can you buy me one? And she's like, ah, not today. And I was like, oh man, but okay. You know, my mom worked hard for her money. She was a single parent. So I wasn't gonna tell her, you know, I, I deserve it, I earned it, blah, 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 blah. So I just said, okay. And then I saw the woman in front of us as she was checking out, she pointed at one of the remote control cars and the cashier took it for her. She was gonna buy one and I, and I grabbed my mom and I was like, look, even she's buying one for her kids. It must be a great toy. And my mom said, you know, not today, maybe another time. And I said, okay, okay. And as the woman finished checking out, she bought the toys, she bought all her clothes, everything that she got. And as it's our turn to go forward, the woman turns around and she kneels in front of me. And she says, here, and she gives it to me. And, and, I, and I couldn't believe it. I looked at my mom like, can I have it? And she was like, yeah, you can take it. So I took it and I was so excited because I knew I didn't deserve this car. Like I didn't have a job. I was only like eight, seven years old. So I couldn't have earned it by myself. My mom was my only source of income. Whatever she would give me, that's the money that I had. And I didn't have it at that time. And this woman freely gave it to me knowing that I couldn't get it by myself. And because sometimes we feel like we are trying to earn our own reputation, our own salvation to show God that we're truly worthy. And when I saw here that the woman gave me this gift freely without me giving her anything in returning, she didn't expect anything back. Because you know, there's sometimes people buy you something expecting something in return, but this gift is free. In Romans 6 verse 23, it says, for the wages of sin is death but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. In Romans 11 verse 29, it says, for the gifts and call of God are irrevocable, meaning once he gives it, he doesn't want anything in return. He doesn't want it back. Meaning once it's given, that's final. It's unchangeable. And I received some pretty good gifts in my life. And that remote control car, I played for that thing until it broke. But the gifts of man do not compare to the gifts of God because the gifts of God are eternal. Like I got bored of that car, but I never got bored of worshiping God. I never got bored of my salvation because truly I felt like 
even though I was trying to live up to the standards, I was always happy because I knew where my salvation was. And I believe the Samaritan woman realized it as well. So she went and she told all that would listen. And it says in John 4, verse 39, Now many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the report of the woman who testified. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they began asking him to stay with them. He stayed there two days, and because of his word, many more believed. And they said to the woman, No longer do we believe because of your words, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this one really is the Savior of the world. See, God doesn't want you to just hear it from other people. He doesn't want you to just read it in the Bible. He wants you to have it for yourself. He wants you to see it for yourself. In Psalms 34, verse 8, it says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the one who takes shelter in Him. So with this message, I just want to encourage you guys that even though times are tough right now, just know everything is in God's hands. No matter what whether your job is not appreciating you right now, or there's having you sent home or working from home school, you're in these online classes now, and you don't really feel the worth, just know that you are a product of grace. No matter what happens, that God is the one who is uplifting you at all times. So right now, God, I just like to thank you for this opportunity for us to meet together online. I pray that this message would go out and would touch the hearts of your people, that they would have an open ear to receive the word that you have placed for them. So God, now I pray over the needs of your people, those who are dealing without jobs now, those who are dealing with this new system of schooling, I pray that you would just be with everyone. Father, I pray over those that are dealing with fear in these tough times, the fear of this virus that's going around. I pray that you would just be with them, that you would uphold them, let them know that you stand with them, that you go before them, and that you direct their steps. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to meet together, and we pray this all in your son's precious name. Amen and amen. You guys have a blessed night.